Hello everyone, I'm Chester44, I'll see you in the fly, and welcome to this let's play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Dead Fire. This isn't supposed to be happening. Last episode, we had a big epic fight where we ended up, uh, having to kill Maura, who we were here to look for. This was part of the fight. This should not be happening right now. So, I'm going to send you in to try and collect what you can between this thing doing the random blasts of everything, which it really should not be doing and is honestly kind of annoying. Like I said, this is not supposed to be happening. Ow. Yeah, the game is completely horribly glitched. So we're gonna be dealing with this the whole time. Wonderful. Yeah, sure. Okay, oh boy. Well, well the good news is we'll be fine. Okay, let's take a look in here then. We can at least do something. This tome appears to be a record of secrets the followers of Whale have whispered to their god in strictest confidence. Sure. A shaft of light breaks through the splintered roof of the Oratory of Whale to illuminate an empty pedestal. Though, sometimes, though it's sometimes hard to tell in the Hall of the Unseen, it's daytime. Motes of dust hover in the glow of the sun. Wave your hand in the light. The skin of your palm prickles with comforting warmth. Place Bacarna's grimoire in the light. The light shines down on blank parchment and dim runes. Nothing else happens. Right! It needs to be night for this to happen. Well done. Isn't there a wait option? Yes, wait. It's a long... It's a bit of a wait, but I think we can do it. I don't know. We're only waiting like eight hours. Why not? Though it's, uh, the beam is tinged with silver from the glow of distant stars. Plates Bacarna's grimoire in the light. You rest the book on the pedestal, bathing its cover and blinding and binding in cool starlight. Bacarna's grimoire twitches with anxious, pent-up energy. The book snaps open, its pages suddenly laid bare to the starry sky. Blank parchment f fills with text as if by an unseen hand, and runes once faded flare to brilliance. The grimoire pulses with energy before going still, its pages ruffled by an ethereal breeze. By the way, uh, I don't think we picked up anything of note from there. I mean, we have Maura's Grasping Belt, which, um... No, we don't really need that. Okay. Well, let's get out of here, as this thing continues to make the many loud noises that it shouldn't be making. I did not expect this kind of a glitch. The sacrifice the eyeless face demands? The yellowing pages of this thick locked tome are written in a dark green ink. Within it you find mad poems, nonsensical formulae, and impossible sketches. On one page you find the following scribed in blood. The Titan opens only to those who have undergone the mystery of the Trephine. Use of the Trephine requires understanding of how the Trephine is used. This mystery cannot be taught, only experienced. A memory of a thing is not the thing itself. A memory of the thing is a thing itself. The trapine demands the understanding of its use in, in sacrifice. Sacrifice the understanding you, you seek. Ah, okay, I think I understand that. This... Okay. Well, we can go down to the scriptorium, I think. But I do kind of need to see if we can do the other thing that needed to be done. Watcher, you remember why we started traveling together? Just seems to have uh, slipped my mind. Uh, to talk. Oh. For me, it was always about Maura. The fringe benefits were secondary, at best. Yet the deeper we delve into the Halls Obscured, the more your motives unravel. Better break this up. It can only get ugly. Am I interrupting? Tain, I believe you were about to call me irresponsible, or was it greedy? Remind me. 
I came here to pull Maura, our friend, out of a bad situation. At first, I assumed that you had showed up for the same reason. But I won't make that mistake again. Now I know better. You're just as petty and self-interested as anyone in the Circle. Your sudden sanctimony is curious. We still don't know what's happened to Maura, but you seem more interested in the Halls than you are in her fate. Unless rescuing Maura was never your goal. Perhaps your motives and hers are more closely aligned than you led me and the Watcher to believe. Is anyone going to clue me in? Apologies, Watcher. These are Circle problems. And they'll be kept between Circle wizards for the moment. Tane shoots a glance at Lengrath. You should have gotten the lay of the land by now. Any news on Maura? Maura was killed and infested with spores. Damn it. From what we've seen of this place, I suppose that shouldn't be surprising. I pray her return to the wheel was swift, at least. But, gods, what a miserable way to end one's life. Lengrath's usual stoicism falters for a moment and she turns away, a frown of deep concern etched into her face. How could this have happened? I suspect a man named Fionlech might have been behind it. Fionlech? Fionlech. Is this another agent of Wal? He's working against Wal, not for them. What is his goal? To take Whale's body for himself. Another madman, then. Wonderful. She pinches the bridge of her nose and takes a deep breath. We cannot allow Wal's Titan body to live. It's simply too dangerous a temptation. We must destroy it. Honestly, I'm with you, Lengrath. The only thing you'd be destroying is opportunity. Did it never occur to you that maybe Wal wanted his body to be found so that it could help those of us with the imagination to use it? Do you even know who Whale is? Whale's entire thing is about taking information and keeping it secret. As cruel as this sanctum can be, I have a soft spot for that old bucket of eyeballs. I wouldn't want to disappoint our host by leaving empty-handed. Destroying Whale's body is the only responsible thing to do in this case. Well, at least the two of us see eye to eye. Unfortunately, responsibility has never held much interest for Tane. Don't let Tane manipulate you to further his own impulsive, foolishly optimistic ends. Foolish optimism has never failed me in the past. At least my plan keeps things interesting. My plan keeps us alive. Find me later. There's something I'd like to discuss with you outside of a certain someone's earshot. We'll talk. But uh, first, I'm wondering if I picked up a book that I need in order to take care of this. Electron of Obfuscation. Yeah, that's something I need to do for this. I thought I had the thing. Hold on a moment. Okay. Uh, the thing we need was actually in the oratory, we just kind of walked by it without realizing. So, let me go and grab that. Shouldn't take long. Yes, it's right there. I just couldn't see it. It blended in. There it is. Memories of Helder. The pages of this tome overflow with Elde Deeren inscribed in a spidery hand. These tell of Helder, a leader of the Hand Occult several centuries past. Though much of it is difficult to read, much less interpret, the end details a ritual aimed at achieving complete communion with the obscured. The memoir suggests that in order to become one with Whale, an individual must entirely erase themselves from history. To exist obscured is to never have ex existed at all. Not even in writing. All right, now we bring this thing over. We burn the horn, now we do this. And basically erase the book entirely. Watcher, if I might have your ear a moment. Yes, in a minute, first things first. Sure. Praise the memories of Helder on the lectern. Light shimmers down upon the tome, and the words of Wake Helder melt away. There we go. Now we can see what this will give us. The Wake's 
Oracular Focus, a small one-handed shield. One extra enemy engaged. Legendary, so extra shield deflection. After empowering an ability, gain five deflection for 20 seconds and grants enlarge shield. The wielder overcharges a focus, increasing the radius of the shield and granting a deflection bonus to other nearby allies. Bonuses can strengthen it. Deflection granted to allies is increased. Or varied. Allies now gain a bonus to all defenses instead of deflection. In addition to bonuses to the empowering. Five deflection until the end of combat or ten deflection for 20 seconds. Well, I mean, I'll take them. Okay. Next step. We need to go up to the Temple of Revelation and give this book back to Bacarna. Then we'll go speak with these two. We probably need to rest as well, actually, now that I think about it. So yeah. Let's head over to Bacarna. And also to the these guys. All right, Bacarna. I remember you. Look what I found. She hugs the book to her chest and squeezes it, sighing contentedly. Thank you for coming back to me. After a long pause, she shifts her attention over to you. And thank you, Watcher. Now I have two friends, and I feel richer than ever. She passes you a pouch of coins. She opens a grimoire and flips to the later pages, chewing on her thumbnail as she reads. This is it. Now I remember how I got involved in this mess. I was searching for a celestial catalyst. Hey, Loth, that ring any bells to you? I believe she refers to the metal born of falling stars. It's supposedly charged with arcane energy and, by all accounts, exceedingly difficult to come by. Ak, he has the right of it. I have been researching the properties of wayward stars. If my findings pan out, a piece of one may be the last component I need to scribe my first spell. That and my book friend here. She pats her grimoire and smiles. I know that a star fell on the Black Isles recently. A brilliant purple rock streaked across the sky and landed in this area. The only trick is finding it. Once I have the metal and complete my spell, I'll see to it that you are the second person in all the world to wield its power. If you had started your tale by explaining how it would benefit us, we would have agreed to it by now. Why would Star Metal have arcane energies? There is much left unanswered about their power. Stars do not visit the Auror very often. For mm -hmm. that reason alone, not many wizards bother to study them. I am just one wizard with a telescope. But I have speculated that there is life among the stars, and its energy reaches out to us from time to time. Once you scribe a spell, will that make you an archmage? Knowing the circle, it will not be so simple. It could take years. Even Consul Hoth had to fight for his acceptance. Save your breath, my dear. The Circle is nothing but a gathering of old crooks dodging taxes by posturing that they care for some nebulous, unachievable, greater good. Consul Hunt makes air quotes by arching his eyebrows twice, grimacing all the while. How can a skull arch eyebrows? A skull doesn't have eyebrows! Never mind. All the same, I am determined to try. Bakarna curls her fingers into a fist and winks. The star could have landed anywhere. The hall is obscured like a magpie on the hunt for shiny things. We are more likely to find the celestial catalyst here than anywhere else in the archipelago. Well, I can think of nothing I'd rather do more than search for a fallen star. Then we are well paired. Agrasima, Watcher. The keepers of this prison might not permit you to take the star metal. If you must harm someone to claim it, Make it quick. Ak. By the way, how did you find yourself trapped in the collections? I spotted a shooting star in the skies over the Black Isles. So brilliant and bright. I sent mercenaries to find it, but heard nothing back for some time. Weeks later, their leader reported back to the observatory, but he was... wrong on the inside. Like his mind was not his own. I blasted him with everything I had. 
but he dragged me screaming into that prison. Ah. Uh. There was something about my research the Hand Occult wanted to hide. They never told me what it was. How did you lose your memory? Sad to say that difficulties of the mind are nothing new for me. Some months ago, a spell backfired, and I need a little help to recall myself from time to time. This is common. But that shrieking from the collections, that was different. It wipes you clean. Whole days passed where it took everything I had just to remember to breathe. Pausing on the memory, Bacarna slowly massages her neck. I think my accident was the only reason I had any mind left to recover. There was some part of me, up here, that the screams never reached. Well, that, that was lucky, I dare say. What happened to the mercenaries you hired? The collections must have claimed the mercenaries. More test subjects for their vile experiments. Every day, the keepers threw more bodies down into the pit. Or fed them alive and screaming to the worm dog. Ask All away, right. Anika. Well, I am going to just check to make sure that, uh... Oh, oh, I found this recipe for invigorating nightmares and immediately thought of you. Hey, Tom Gravel Stink need new drugs. Something stronger. Something uglier. Squinting down at the parchment, Drowsy Puke nods and begins combining ingredients. He sprinkles the mixture onto the nose of a passing rat and chuckles merrily when the creature stiffens into a ball and dies. New drugs ready for sampling. Sleep well, idiot. Resistance to resolve afflictions. Hmm. Yeah, resistance to afflictions doesn't seem to help me that much. I'll take deep slumber. Well, yeah, deep slumber. There, that got rid of things, and I would like to... It's probably deeper down, but I kind of want to make absolutely certain. Give me a moment. I was right. I need to uh, continue on with the quest, and I will be able to get it then. Anyway, let's go down and speak to those two, because clearly we need to. They clearly have more to say to us. Lengrath, you're up first. Lengrath rests a hand lightly on your arm and motions for you and she to step away. You saw me arguing with Tane. You should know why. We found a curious document while investigating the scriptorium. Its meaning isn't entirely clear to us, but it appears to detail a device instrumental in the creation of Wild's Titan form. The device likely still rests within the Titan. I don't like where this is going. After what we've encountered here, that's the only wise response. Her lips pull into a pained smile. Tane believes the artifact is too powerful to remain under Wells' care. And in that, we're agreed. But Tane's never met an exciting new toy he didn't want all to himself. Tane's a fool. We can't let him have something this dangerous. Or anyone. No Archmage of the Circle should possess this power. For once, a What do I mean for once? Aloth, we are entirely in agreement. Lengrath shoots a pointed glare at your companion, but says nothing her eyes can't more menacingly convey. You and I are on the same page, so to speak. We can't let this fall into unscrupulous hands. If you find it, give it to me. I would keep it safe. Will you seek it? No Archmage should have access to this kind of power, Lengrath. Not even you. The safety of Aora is my primary concern. You know this. Here's the document I spoke of. She presses a scroll well worn by time into your hands. Pages of dizzling, dizzyingly complex arcane diagrams depict an intricate device of copper and stone inlaid with layers of enchantment. Some assembly required. There's a diagram of the device on the scroll. It appears to be comprised of three discrete pieces. You'll need to find each of them. Uh-huh. I don't know how her dragons have the patience. 
Tane scoffs toward Lengraf, shaking his head. Still angry at Lengraf. Oh, you're still here. Len and I have our disagreements from time to time. I guess that's to be expected wherever the circle is concerned. Hey, you've done some good work by us. Kept yourself busy. Tane purses his lips and studies you. Don't you worry about Len. We'll have our differences sorted out in no time, and we'll be the best of pals. That's a guarantee from Tane. Uh-huh. Well, we also have this. The squat device before you hums quietly, except that it's entirely silent. The humming sensation you realize happens not in your ears, but at the edge of your mind. Picture the key you received from the memory hoarder in your mind's eye. You place your hands on either side of the machine. The not-quite sound grows louder. It gives you the impression of a growling stomach hungry for something within you. Sacrifice the knowledge of how to use this machine. A prickling sensation scales your arms, sliding into the joints of your shoulders and slipping up your spine and into the base of your skull. You feel lessened somehow as a thought slips from your mind like something you just meant to say. It flows down your arms and into the trephine, which whirls contentedly. The floor beneath you shivers. Okay. Oh. That's not unsettling. How novel. I... I would join you down there, but I've got this, uh, fear of being digested. You understand. Yeah, I kind of do. All right, which leads to the upper bowels, which is going to be a hell of a search. Oh god, we have a lot of stuff we're gonna need to sell. Oh yeah, when we eventually get on selling things, we got a lot of things that need selling. But... Oh god, so many books. So many books to sell. Anyway. How are we on things that need to be upgraded here? Ooh, this one's almost done. Eight more afflictions and you'll be good. You still need another five kith killed by this in order to get the next level. So that'll happen. Uh, you don't have any. You don't have any. You've got this. I can try empowering abilities for the sake of it, but you're not going to be using this for that long. Are there any upgrades I want to give? Ooh, I could make you legendary. Could. Family harmony doesn't matter to you. Ooh, what about, uh... I can make that legendary. Hmm. Actually, this, this needs to be legendary. I'll do that. There we go. Black and plate armor. Very nicely. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I don't think I really have anything else here. Well, I can improve the Keybreaker key Scepter, maybe. Eh, yeah, we're fine. This other one, this other one's the Eye of Whale. Whale, right. I don't know if this is actually taking effect. Feels like I should be, uh, or maybe he's just not using it as much as he should be. I'm not sure. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and end this episode here. Not the stream, Jesse. Oh, hold on, before I do. You got to level up. You need a level up. I'll give you a point in stealth and a point in history. That makes sense to me. And you get to this level. You're definitely taking prestige, and you cannot get the really good ones. Of course you can't. Ah, uh, Cloak of Death. Lengraf's Reflection. Could be useful. Console Hot's Corrosive Self. Petrification. Arcane Cleanse. Hmm. And Sitsal's Enchanted Armory. Let's go with Lengraf's Reflection. 
something protective. All right, as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here, not the stream, just the episode. Next episode, we'll head down into the upper bowels and see what we can do about Whale's body. Till then, I am Trusted44, also known as Falai. That is Laniara, Adair, Joti, Fasina, and Aloth. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, and I shall see you all next time.